Morning traders and welcome to the new trading week ahead. In terms of the big picture macro overviews this week, I think there's some, some really sort of key thematics we're watching. One, of course, is the US dollar. We're actually seeing the dollar index up nine weeks in a row. It's a sort of run of form we've never seen before. Uh, that exceptionalism story is obviously very real uh, and it's very supportive of the US dollar. And it's hard to see that changing quite rapidly anytime soon. One thing we are watching though is, is China. Obviously China's been pretty weak and that's been why so much flow has flowed into the US dollar. But the data in China is turning and sentiment is turning and we're gonna watch that prime rate decision on Wednesday, but no one's really expecting any major changes to their one and five year prime rate. But if we were to see dollar CNH moving down to say 720, then that, that move could, could have big implications for the dollar on a more broad basis and see a bit of a tradable sell-off playing through after that very rich positioning playing in the dollar. Now, one thing we are watching, uh, which is, could be influential for risk and the US dollar, are US real rates. Uh, can we see five-year real rates or tips trade through five, uh, sorry, 222? That was the recent highs. And also on the 10-year real rate, can we make a move through 2%, which as you can see, has been a bit of a high playing through. Of course, we're watching the NASDAQ. Yeah, we saw that 1.8% uh, sell off on Friday. Was that just an options blip? Was that down to the sort of hedging flows we've been seeing as market makers and options dealers uh, hedge some of their gamma and their exposure playing through? We've got our eyes on crude as well. You know, it's been on, a, on an energy more broadly has been absolutely ripping recently. Can crude trade up into that 93.75 handle? You know, the levels that we saw in October, November, double top last last year. Uh, you know, what's what's happening? And 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 yeah, you know, given the fundamentals at the moment, with such a, a tight oil market, um, you know, the one suspects that pullback should be a buying opportunity. Now, as we go through the week, of course, you know, the, the highlight really um, is going to be around the central bank rate uh, decisions. Uh, no more more important than the Federal Reserve meeting that comes out later in the week on Thursday at 4 a.m. and then Powell's press conference half an hour later. Now, no one's expecting uh, rates to be uh, changed here. As you can see here from the mate rates matrix, uh, the, the, the swaps market and the rates market is giving absolutely no probability to a rate hike playing through at this meeting. We've got eight basis points being priced for November, which give a one in three chance of a, of a hike by that period. And by the end of the year, in November and December, uh, we've got 11 basis points of cumulative tightening being priced in. It's really when you get into, into next year, uh, you can see by June, we've got 17 basis points of cuts being priced in by the end of the year, about 80 basis points of cuts playing through. Although so far, if you have a look at Z3 and Z4, you can see about 97 basis points of cuts being priced there. Now they're not gonna cut rates or hike rates, should we say, um, but one thing we are watching very much is the economic projections and also the dot plot projections. On the dots, um, yeah, I don't think anyone's really expecting any major changes uh, to their 2023 dots, uh, currently at 5.6%. Uh, you know, will we see that being altered in any kind of capacity? One suspects not, one suspects that will sort of change and stay at 5.6%. So that gives them the flexibility to hike rates uh, you know, at a future meeting this year if so, if they want. Uh, will we see any kind of changes to the 2024 dot, currently at 4.62%? Um, if we are going to see anything, there is a non-zero probability that they raise that by 25 basis points. It wouldn't surprise, um, but you know that could give them um, the idea that the higher for longer is very much entrenched into their dot plot projections. Where we could see some changes is in that long run dot plot, currently 2.5%. There's a good chance that they could take that by 25 basis points to 2.75%. And again, that just feeds into the academics idea about where R star is. In terms of GDP forecasts, that's going to be an interesting one there for 2023. Uh, very much counter to what we saw from the ECB. We're expecting uh, that to go from around 1%, you know, potentially up as high as 2% for growth. And for 2024, we should see that being right, uh, raised by 20 basis points to 1.3%. We might see a, a cut to the, G, uh, to the PCE forecasts, uh, currently at 3.9% for core PCE for this year. That could come down to about 3.5%. Are playing through. In the UK, there's a lot of um, information to, to focus on. If we have a look at uh, interest rate expectations in the UK at the moment, um, you can see that we've got about an 83% chance priced into swaps uh, that the bank rate's being taken up at the Bank of England meeting this week uh, to 5.5%. Uh, you can see by the end of the year, we're sort of looking around 50-50 uh, that we get another rate hike playing through. So are the Bank of England done? Is this going to be a center, sentimental situation playing through? Uh, most economists, in fact, all economists that I'm seeing here uh, are calling for that rate hike playing through. Now, before that point, we do get the CPI prints uh, the day before. The market's expecting headline at 7.1% and core at 6.8%. So one suspects you'd have to see a really big miss 
uh, yeah, it's below 6.3% for that, that rate hike to be called into question. And on Friday, we get the PMI numbers coming through where the market's expecting uh, uh, 43.4 on manufacturing and 49 uh, on services. Again, pretty woeful numbers there as well and should keep the pound uh, a sell on rallies candidate playing through. In Europe, you can see the rate hike expectations across the curve. You know, there's a residual amount of tightening being priced in by the end of the year, about 15 basis points being priced by March. That could change very quickly. Uh, and you can see in June, July, the, the market's open then to, to rate cuts coming from the ECB. Now, on, later in the week, we do get the manufacturing and services PMI number. This is the flash print. So that will be very important to Euro. Uh, you know, European growth has been called very much into question. But if we are going to see a turn towards sentiment towards China, Maybe that's going to have some positive implications for Europe as well. But you can see here the PMI numbers in Europe, very, very weak expected. Uh, I like selling euro on rallies, continue to play through. The Bank of Japan meeting on Friday, you know, given the commentary from Oeda in, in the publications that was later cleared up as non-signal. Yeah, will this be have any kind of bearing whatsoever on the yen? We'll have to see. Um, the national CPI numbers come in at half past nine. That could actually have big implications there as well. Other than that, we're expecting rate hikes from the Norges Central Bank in Norway. The Rix Bank should take, they've got 25 basis points. Uh, we're looking for the Brazilian Central Bank uh, later in the week to cut rates by 50 basis points. Uh, and we're also looking for the Swiss National Bank uh, to take rates up 25 basis points. But that's not fully priced. We've got about 70% prior probability. And CAD Swiss has been a winner recently, looking to buy uh, you know, pullbacks in that currency uh, cross at the moment. So a big week ahead. We've got to see the big macro overviews, but the Fed meeting and the Bank of England meeting, the highlights for me here.